sometimes we just don't want to work on ourselves. It is something that all of us have to deal with because whenever something is brought to our attention, whether we have offended a brother, offended a friend, whether we have loved somebody too much, too touchy-feely, too not touchy-feely, whether we are anything, we don't really want to examine ourselves to see how we can do better, how we can communicate better. It normally makes people really uncomfortable. And that is something that should not be the case. It should be the natural set of circumstances in our lives to want to always be a little bit outside of our comfort zones so that we are always expanding, always learning, always figuring out how to love better, how to talk to people better, how to live better generally. And it is a difficult concept and there's a lot of problems in this world where the idea that Everybody is the hero of their own story, and everybody believes that they are always right, so they never want to admit that they are wrong. And it is, creates this massive divide between people, and people don't want to come together, and they don't want to learn from each other and grow because they feel like they are so separated, when in fact they are not. I think that is something we should consider today. Shoot, Jesse, tell me something good. <laughs> uh, working working on oneself is is very it's a very difficult task. It's a very tricky task to do. I feel when I think about myself doing it, the I want to say that the main obstacle that I have when I when I begin to work on myself is really just holding myself accountable for my actions, not just my actions, but my thoughts that go on in my head when I go to healing on myself, because I have to stop denying all the things that we deny to ourselves. Like Gil said, denial, and, and Miss Ilette said, denial is a very big factor of healing. But once you can accept, whether if you agree with it or not, you don't even have to agree with you, accept it. Just as long as you accept those things, all those bad, harmful things, and the, the good ones too, the great ones too, because there, there are good things that come from healing but it's those nasty, ugly things that we are in denial of ourselves. And we keep telling us, no, that's not me. I don't do that. I don't do that. But we really do. We really do. And it's okay. I may not change tomorrow after I hold myself accountable. And after I tell myself, okay, you see, you know what? You are, you know what? They may, they, they have a point. You can act this way around certain people or certain whatever it may be. You go to acting funny and they're right. You can be a little toxic. Okay, I get it. I, I will accept that I can be toxic sometimes. I, I may not fix it tomorrow, but now I'm more mindful and I know that aspect of me. So now I have to put it into action and start working and trying to be more aware of the actions that come after that acceptance. Very well said. And I think that is something with all of us. It's something, Gil, that me and you have talked about. On many occasions, uh, to be aware, to be self-aware is one of our main points in all of our discussions. And to be self-aware means also a little bit of self-pain because realizing and communicating with all those parts of who we are is not always easy because we've all had experiences even recently, where different parts of our personalities come out and they are the ones that we thought we've already dealt with. And to recognize it and say, hey, all right, this piece of me is coming back when I thought I've already got this under control. Let's, let's love you and say this is not your time or however each one of us uh, works on that. And 
I think it's a pretty big subject, and I know that you've had some pretty good influence on some of the ways that I have personally handled my own slices of recognizing myself, and I know you just always give the, the most wonderful insight to me, and I just want to hear you talk because I, I love your voice. <laughs> thank you, Kevin, and thank you, Yessie. Beautiful points, very important. Um, yeah, there is a comfort zone. Uh, the program is uh, influencing us in such a way that we are creating a comfort zone. And this comfort zone has to do with identity. And identity is a key ingredient in working on self. Um, the, um, the self work and the self inquiry to start to put the puzzle of, of selfhood together uh, understanding that we're fragmented, we're separated, uh, we live in division, um, ultimately leads to uh, a transformation of identity. Um, and uh, that is not something that the ego personality takes lightly or easily. The ego personality is very threatened by that shift of identity. Uh, the ego personality likes to maintain its own identity. And it, it takes it from being plugged into the program and become an automation. And that's a comfort zone. It's much easier, in other words. Even though, if you really look at it, it's not so true. When you begin to work on yourself and you begin to see results, as you become more integrated and as you step towards wholeness more, uh, first, it begins inwardly uh, as an inner integration, and then you can begin to uh, spill it over to the outside. Um, so the, um, the ratio between you being influenced by the program and you influencing the program from your own inner integrity is shifting. But that takes an identity shift. And this identity shift usually comes with a crisis. There is a level of crisis in that. And we, we many times call it a healing crisis. You know, we always say that healing takes a crisis because when you're so used to live in a certain way and suddenly you start to work on yourself and there is a, sh a, a radical change happening in your life, that is not something that's easy to carry. Uh, th there is a tendency to want to fall back into something that's more familiar, something that's more comfortable. That's the comfort zone. Uh, so to work on self is a gradual process. It's something that you can truly see results when you stay with it. And that is not an easy task, not for any human, myself included, um, from my experience. Uh, and those aspects that would like to draw you back into that comfort zone will always pop up. They will always show up. Uh, and, and it cycles. And you go through a cycle and then you go a bit deeper and you bring a bit more of your inner self into the outer and you create more integration, more coherence. And then there is a cycle that takes you into the program. No one is exempt. Uh, so in, in working on self, you must build resilience, determination, uh, stamina. And, and again, it's a, it's, a, it's a different kind of stamina. It's a different kind of resilience. Uh, because uh, many times you can work on yourself for so long and you don't see results that are expected by the ego personality because the ego personality perceived through the five senses. Many of those changes are occurring on very deep levels, on quantum and subquantum levels first. And then they go into the molecular structures into the cellular structures. It occurs on the DNA on very subtle levels. Most of it goes into the unconscious. And so it's very hard for a human to, uh, to stay with it because there is no results as quick or as fast as the ego personality would like to see uh, in physical manifestations and things occurring in your life. And, it builds a lot of fantasies and we go through a lot of that and all of that needs to at some point be torn down uh, and, and it, it requires truly a tremendous inner, inner silence and stillness and inquisitiveness, inner listening 
and uh, development of the sixth and seventh sense. Uh, imagination must come into play. A lot of attributes and a lot of uh, um, faculties that for a human uh, uh, ego, which all of us are uh, here in duality, is something we get to dismiss. It's something that we say, hey, and you know, that's nice, but you know, let's, let's get into what is actually more tangible to us. Yeah, the five senses and good sense. This is truly one of the main things that most people get um, discouraged through, um, get disillusioned by and disenchanted by because the ego always want to see quick results uh, and, and I, I, I want to see proof. But when we talk about consciousness, because this is all work of consciousness, ultimately, and energy, you're not going to see proof so quick. Uh, especially when you truly go through a process of integration, because this process must start on very deep levels. And what you access and what you bring into your human is something that is unpredictable. It's not something you can control or dominate. It's not something you can tell what to do or how, because this something is what created you. This something is what animates you. This something is what gives you life force. This something is an intelligence that in your greatest of fantasies you won't be able to figure out, not with your mind or any uh, apparatus that the human holds dear to their heart. That's one of the reasons why scientists uh, are really um, uh, boggled by the the subject of consciousness, even though consciousness is the most important subject for us to address constantly as individuals and as groups and as communities and ultimately as a society. It will be inevitable uh, because in that we're going to find the solutions for the problems that we're facing. We're going to find the, the, the medicine to, to, to the illnesses that we're facing. And, and ultimately, we're going to find the, um, the answer to the illusion of death, ultimately. So working on self goes on all levels. It is a process you cannot fake. And I know there is this line that says, fake it until you make it. Not going to work here. Not going to work. There is no fake it until you make it. Here, you have to really make it. That means you have to stay with it. You have to become genuine in your inner inquiry and you have to build the resilience, the determination and the patience uh, with yourself and start putting the puzzle together. And most of all, you have to humble yourself to understand that what you're calling forth to your human arena is by far much more intelligent than you have ever fathomed in your greatest of fantasies as a human being, because it is the intelligence of spirit, soul, core consciousness. That was extremely well said. And one thing that you said that a lot of people try to do in business or in, in growing, and they'll try to fake it until they make it. That is a pretty common thing to be said. And there is some truth to that in a profession, in a, I really would like to be this, so I'll go hang out with these other people that are experiencing that and fake it until I make it. That is true, except in how you phrased it, which is so accurate, is you can't fake here. You can't fake relationships I mean, you can, but it doesn't last. Either the other person sees it, or you just can't fake it anymore. And ultimately, it just collapses upon itself. And so you are so right about how that is something that people should realize. You can't fake being a better person. People are going to see it pretty quickly. And... It takes a lot of effort. It's easy to sit here and say, you know, just work on yourself, be patient, breathe easier, you know, get along with your coworkers better, 
You know, you know all these things, it's so easy to say. Way so difficult to do and practically impossible to fake it for more than a day, unless you're a complete sociopath. And that, that is just wow. Yeah, both of y'all's input is just phenomenal. Yeah, see, I just see you taking notes over there, and I would love to know what you were thinking. <laughs> I was just writing down the whole identity shift that he, that Gil was talking about, because that is something that I've noticed, and other people notice that from me when we go, when we begin to work on ourselves, we do lose certain people and certain habits and what not, because we're putting in the work. We're putting in the work. And within myself, I, for example, one of my friends or one of my family members will say, you know, years down the road, like, hey, you remember we used to do this all the time. We used to do this. And I'm like, I know we did. And believe me, I'm not saying that I didn't enjoy it or that I wouldn't enjoy it now, possibly. But at this time, that doesn't interest me. Because I'm working on myself. I'm working to elevate whether if it's intellectually, physically, or I'm just working on my human tasks that I have, which is school and kids and I have a job. So when I when I'm when I have all of that, obviously I don't have enough time to go out to the bar and hang out with you and stay up all night and then be able to sleep in the next day because I have a hangover. I can't do that. I have homework or I have kids to do. So yes, I will change. And the things that I used to do, I won't be doing anymore. And then they're like, well, you changed so much. You're not the different, you're not the same person I knew. And I'm like, that's the whole point of it though. That's the whole part of it. When you begin to work on yourself, you're going to lose people. You're going to lose habits or things that you used to do. You're going to think differently. You're not going to, the same conversation that we had a month ago, I may feel totally different about it now because of the healing, because now different perspectives. There's something else that, that I wrote from the same book that I've been reading that I mentioned a couple weeks ago this morning, the chapter said, be, he mentioned being flexible in our thinking and willing to entertain an opposite set of ideas. Tell me what book for everybody watching. It is called The Gift of Adversity. And I told myself I was going to write down the author's name. I forgot. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it's The Gift of Adversity. And it's taken me a while to read just because I always, I, I need to make more time to be able to read longer chapters. But I read one today and that's what stuck out to me because it's, it's true. In order for us to, to be more open-minded and for us to grow intellectually, physically, emotionally, spiritually, religiously, we have to be flexible in our thinking. And at least, like I said previously, even if you don't accept it, even if you don't agree with it, but just be open to hearing those new sets of ideas can 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 really be a great help to helping you be successful in whatever aspect in life it is that you're working on yourself. Yeah, that is very true. And it is it's just important to stay aware. And it's important to stay aware in what both of y'all so wonderfully said. It's it, it really boils down to how much do you want to put into yourself to get back that ultimately goes out to the world and also comes back. It's like breathing. It just comes in and comes out. But it can come out either in a very positive ways or very negative ways. It depends on how you want to express it. But we are giving birth every moment to the new us. It's like you were saying that we are different all the time. Well, of course we are in so many ways because we're introduced to new ideas. We're having different interactions with uh, the people that we care about and the new people that come into our lives. And then, of course, the fluidity of our bodies that, you know, we're not the same cells that we were a year ago. So everything about us is constantly changing and evolving. And so we have to focus on that, the eternal that is inside of us and let that shine out. And as we've said a bunch of times, rip off those blankets and let our own personal sun shine. 
it is uh, quite important for the whole development of humanity and for us just to be able to smile and laugh and hug and cry and and smile with that warm look in our eyes that hey it's going to be okay we got each other's back we're going to make it and if any of you happen to be in the local area in between Marshall or Shreveport come out and join us at 1:30 every Sunday thank y'all for joining us and we'll see you next time